Hello students, welcome to Sarasa classes. In today's lecture, we will be discussing a very important topic regarding molecular orbital theory. And that is to calculate the number of nodal planes in molecular orbitals. Now, how many types of nodal planes are there? There is an axial nodal plane and there is an angular nodal plane. Now, these nodal planes, how they are lying with respect to the z-axis, that is what we have to understand now into sub-depth. So, here I am showing a cylindrical part, which is basically denoting that this cylindrical part is the electron density formed by the combination of two atomic orbitals where the red dots are indicating the nucleus and the internuclear axis is our z axis over here okay so how is the nodal plane lying? So for that we will say it is lying something like that. And that nodal plane we will be saying it is lying perpendicular to the z-axis. Now having said that this nodal plane basically is going to divide this electron density in such a manner that if this end it is plus, this end it will be negative. Okay. So now we have understood that the axial plane, which is obviously this one, is basically lying perpendicular to the z axis. What about the angular nodal plane? Let's see how that is lying. So for that, we will think something like that okay so this is lying basically through the z axis and which means that if the positive if the upper half is positive then the lower half will be negative okay so a nodal plane is basically is a, a surface okay on which the electron density is zero all right so now we have two such combinations of the 1s 1s orbital and their combinations can be positive or negative which is indicating positive means bonding negative means anti-bonding interaction so if there is a positive interaction then the shape of the 1s molecular orbital so these are your molecular orbitals and these are your atomic orbitals combining and we can see that the bonding molecular orbital is of lower energy this is your energy axis and the anti-bonding is higher in energy. Now again if we check the bonding molecular orbital which is this one that is sigma 1s and the anti-bonding orbital is basically sigma star 1s. In the bonding molecular orbital there are no nodal planes because there are no zero electron density. But here if you check this lobe on the right hand side if this is positive then this lobe is negative that means there should be a nodal plane passing right through the middle point of these two lobes okay which means lying perpendicular to the z-axis that means the nodal plane should be somewhere here okay just here like that 
again let's check another combination of orbitals so this one if this is your z axis any p orbital lying on the z axis obviously this will be your pz orbital combining with another pz orbital and here also the combination can be bonding and anti bonding so for anti bonding we have negative and for bonding we have positive okay so for the bonding mo we can see this is the shape of the molecular orbital and for the anti bonding mo we can see this is the shape of the molecular orbitals formed over here okay so now what we will say if this is the internuclear axis for the bonding orbital formed by the combination of two pz orbitals over here okay let's draw it again Okay, it's getting stuck a little bit. Okay, so I think that is it. Now again, we can see over here for the bonding MO from the PZ orbitals, there are no points where the electron density is zero. So we will say this particular orbital will be having no nodal planes, axial or angular. But if you check the upper one, that is the antibonding orbitals, we will say over here that we can see that this particular orbit on the right hand side looks like a mirror image of the molecular orbital in the left hand side. Okay, This lobe is the mirror image of this lobe. So whenever there is such type of sign change as we have seen in this case, this is a, this particular lobe is mirror image of that. Okay. So we had a nodal plane passing right through the center of the Z axis and being perpendicular. So over here we will say there also is a nodal plane like this passing right through the center. Okay, and this particular nodal plane is axial. Okay, next, when we consider the combination of these two orbitals, obviously, we are calling this as Px orbital. Okay, and this is basically a side on overlap or lateral overlap. This one on the top is a head on overlap. Okay, head on overlaps lead to the formation of sigma orbital. So, this is basically going to be sigma 2pz orbital, and this is going to be sigma star 2pz orbital. Side on overlaps lead to the formation of pi bonds. Okay, so this will be pi 2px orbital, and this will be pi star 2px orbital okay now if we check over here again we can see for the bonding molecular orbital over here there should be a nodal plane passing along the z axis okay so this is our angular nodal plane this is our angular nodal plane so the bonding orbital from the combination of two p orbitals via a side on overlap will be having an angular nodal plane similarly we will say for the pi star 2px we can see just understand this part here the sign minus and here it is negative sorry this is positive and this is negative okay 
Now, if you think of an angular plane passing right through the z-axis in such a manner, then we can say if top is top lobe is positive, down lobe is negative. Top lobe is negative, then down lobe is positive. Another one we can say over here you can see if you pass a nodal plane right through the z axis but it is lying perpendicular in this manner okay then one can say if the left hand lobe is positive and down part is negative okay this portion i'm saying this portion it looks like a mirror image of this portion that is why there is a actual lobe all right and why there is a angular lobe because this portion looks like a mirror image of this portion okay so the best way or trick to find out 